What is up, TBS crew? I am back with another reaction. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So we have some, I don't know, holiday-related videos. I got one creepypasta and one uh, horror stories video. So we're going to do the creepypasta first. We have Creepypasta Jr. I quit drinking on St. Patrick's Day. Creepypasta uploaded March 18th, 2017. So it's almost three years old. Uh, it's really one of the only decent length uh, St. Patrick's Day related videos that I could find on YouTube. So I'm just doing it. Y'all know I usually get holiday related uh, videos out to y'all. So I don't know. I don't drink. I don't smoke. So I, I can't say I can relate to the quit drinking uh, part of it, but it sounded interesting. It's creepy pasta junior. Y'all know how he get down. So hey enough talking Y'all already know I got my green on so uh, ain't nobody pinching me because you know you will get backhanded like a pimp but Y'all already know all the important links will be down in the description without further ado. Let's get into it I've never been much for drinking and partying. Right. It wasn't really something I desired growing up. Sure, there were the occasional high school parties fueled by raided liquor cabinets and fake IDs. But I always found myself maybe having one drink and then leaving for the night. The same trend continued after high school. My friends whom I grew up with would invite me to come drink with them at house parties and such. While I did enjoy the social interactions, I eventually found myself going out less and less frequently. Right. By the time I was legally able to drink, my desire to was absolutely non-existent. It'd be like that. That, and the fact that my friends progressively stopped inviting me to drink as the years went by made me want to even less. Right. So, I was surprised when I received a call from a couple of friends to go out to a local pub on St. Patrick's Day. I was even more surprised to find myself actually getting into my car to go meet them. Maybe it was the lack of social stimulus, or perhaps a hidden desire to reconnect with old friends. Either way, I decided I would step out of my comfort zone and try to enjoy a night with my friends. I arrived at the pub early in the evening. The streets were already filled to the brim with intoxicated emerald fanatics, ranting and raving. Due to the fact that there was no parking for about four miles, I began to regret driving myself as I only lived maybe six miles away from the establishment. After finally finding a parking spot, I began my trek through the sea of green. While I walked, most of the people I saw were being overtly obnoxious. But the half-naked man on the public trash can shouting, I'm a leprechaun, pinch me, did make me laugh. The sun was already setting as I finally reached my destination. My friends were already inside waiting. You could probably jumpstart a car with the amount of shock on their faces when I walked through the door. But much to my surprise, they quickly got over it and welcomed me with wide drunken arms. I wasn't even at my seat before one of them dragged a server over to get me a shot. To be honest, I still really didn't want to drink. But I promised myself at least to try and have a good time. So, the night went on. The alcohol flowed, laughs were had, and memories were made. Before I ended up expelling the contents of my stomach all over someone, Ew. I made the decision to call it a night. I was oh. met with boos and jeers from my friends, but they were just happy to have me come out in the first place. Stepping out of the pub doors was like stepping into another world. For some strange reason, the mass of people whom I had seen earlier had, for the most part, vanished. The streets were now quiet and empty, apart from the occasional frat boy passed out in front of a building. <laughs> My town was by no means a large town, but to have the streets be this quiet was definitely strange. 
I decided to push the oddness aside and make my way home. Even though I lived only a short distance away, I resigned myself to walking. I didn't want to tempt fate by getting behind the wheel. Right. The air had a chilling bite to it as I continued my walk. After my first mile of staggering trying to keep my hands warm, is when I started to hear something. Footsteps. They were faint at first, but began to grow in loudness as they approached behind me. Here we go. I just assumed it was just another bar patron in the same position as uh, me. Don't, don't be assuming. Trying to make their way home. Don't be assuming. But after about 20 minutes of walking, I realized that the footsteps were still behind me. Man, 20 minutes? I don't care who you are. Hearing footsteps behind you in the middle of the night when you are alone can be one of the most unnerving sounds in the world. It should be. Part of me wanted to turn around and see whoever was behind me. Yeah. But the other part of me wanted to take off in a sprint for as long as I could. Or that. After a few minutes of thinking it over, I realized I was being childish. That it was just another random person who happened to be walking the same way I was. For 20 minutes? As I walked, I casually glanced over my shoulder. He tripping. What I saw almost stopped my heart. It, it was definitely a man. But he was abnormally tall. Clearly over six foot. Damn. His body was covered in dark clothing. It was difficult to make out, but I think he was wearing a large overcoat. His hair was long and patchy, which hung disheveled in front of his face. What really caught me off guard was how the man was walking. He was lurching forward, letting his arms hang limply in front of him. My first thought was Frankenstein's monster. Just seeing this man sent a chill down my spine so cold that it made the frigid air feel almost warm. In my drunken state, my mind began to craft excuses for this man behind me. That he was a disgraced basketball player who was down on his luck, trying desperately to find a place to sleep tonight. What? Surprisingly, that thought calmed me, and I stopped to breathe a sigh of relief. As soon as I stopped walking, my heart began to pound furiously. Because, as soon as I stopped, the man behind me also stopped. It was at that moment that I realized he was, in fact, following me. You don't say. I tried my best not to panic and resume my pace. Sure. I rapidly tried to think of a way out of this situation. Run. I opted to start running after I rounded the next corner to try and lose this guy. Every time my pace quickened, his did as well. Call the police. My turn was quickly approaching but I couldn't help but wonder if I was going to be fast enough to outrun this guy, especially in my current drunken state. I rounded the corner and took off like an Olympic sprinter. The icy air felt like a thousand knives stabbing my lungs. My legs felt like lead after the first four minutes and the alcohol made me feel dizzy and nauseous. Still, I ran trying desperately to put some distance between me and my unwanted follower. After 10 minutes of running, I collapsed in someone's front yard, expelling about 80 bucks worth of alcohol all over the person's garden. Ew. Catching my breath, I immediately sat up and looked around. There was no sign of the man. There are a few times in my life that I can recall where I was extremely overjoyed about something. And that was one of those times. Right. It was a chore to stand back up. But somehow I managed. And I continued my journey home, which was only around the block. I laughed to myself at the thought that the man probably thought I was the crazy one. Taking off running like that. He probably was just trying to get home after all. No. I finally made it onto my street and seeing a couple of cars drive by gave me a renewed peace of mind. Until the sound of the engines faded. And were replaced by a new sound. 
a familiar sound. Footsteps. Mm-hmm. My body went numb and my mind went blank. Oh, I bet. The next thing I remember is waking up the following morning in my bed. My head was pounding and my chest was on fire. Alcohol can do funny things to a person's brain. Make them see different things. Or create something new entirely. I'm not 100% positive on what actually happened last night. Maybe there was someone stalking me. Maybe there wasn't. I was just glad to have made it home safely. There was one other thing I forgot to mention when I woke up. After realizing where I was, I happened to glance at my window. There was an abnormally large handprint on my window. See? Uh-uh. I don't know what's scarier to me. That I didn't actually hallucinate all of last night. Or that the handprint was on the inside of the glass. Ooh. Either way, I know one thing for sure. I'm never going to drink ever again. <sighs> so he got into your room? Fuck that. Bullshit. He was not going the same damn way you were. I would believe that if when you stopped, he kept going. But when you stopped, he stopped. He was following your ass. And he somehow got into your house when you passed out from being drunk. Fuck all that. Man, I'm not going for any of that bullshit. Man, do y'all are y'all going for any of that any of that that he just said? Are y'all going for any of that bullshit? I'm not going for that bullshit. That man was following you and got into your house somehow after you passed out. From being inebriated. Nah, you know what? I'ma end this right here. Cause I'm about I'm low key. I'm low key about to get upset. Cause that that was that's bullshit. It's bullshit. He he just coming up with excuses. He was about to get fucked up. I'm like I I this I I'm 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 done. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you drop a like, a comment, and share the video. Join the TBS crew. That is all I got for y'all this time around. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And I am out.